he said some a statement. He said, all that I knew where I might find him, he wished he knew where he might find God. Which is, I believe, in, in, in the hearts, in the back of people's minds to this day. If they could just have an audience with God to plead their case, to let him know what they desire, what they really feel on the inside. Has that been your experience maybe somehow? Or you know someone like that? You wish you knew where God is to sit down with him and have a conversation. You know, I watched a movie once. I believe it, in the movie, I forgot what it's called, but uh, this lady ha has to uh, got to have a chance to have dinner, uh, lunch with Jesus and ask all these questions and get the meaning of life explained to her and everything. And I can understand why they would make such a movie. I mean, a lot of people wish they could talk to God like that. The thing is, God is a faith God. It took us many years to understand that, but we, we've come to realize He's a faith God. Actually, in the book of Romans chapter 4, it says that He calleth those things which be not as though they were. He's a faith God. Elisha one time is here with his servant at his keep. And the king has sent to capture Elisha. He sent a whole army. And the young man looked in the morning and saw the army and said, Alas, my master, we are undone. And Elisha said something. He said, Don't be afraid. Those that are with us are more than they that are with them. And he said, Lord, open his eyes. You don't need to open mine, open his eyes. I see by faith. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes and when he saw, he saw the mountain full of chariots of fire, horsemen, amazing. And Jesus, he says that, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. He is here right now. You ask, how is, where is he? How is he there? He's in us. He's with us and in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that carries His presence. Jesus is here. Right now where I'm recording, He's in me, He's with you there where you're listening. It's a faith thing. He's there. This is where now, when we do miracles in His name, it baffles the world. It baffles people of other religions. Like, How did that happen? Someone said, maybe that guy was on the verge of being healed or, or of getting well anyway. You just came at the right moment. It's interesting how many right moments we keep coming at, if that's the case. Can you imagine? He says he's with us always. I love his presence. I mean, I don't need to feel anything, but I know he's here. Sometimes I feel the power of God, sometimes I don't. It doesn't matter. He's here. His word is enough. Can you, can you believe it? His word is enough. And when we pray in his name, the Bible said if we pray according to his will, according to his will, according to his will, he, we know that he hears us. What is praying according to his will? It is praying according to his word because his word is his will. You see why you need the word of God. You see why you need to be in church week in, week out. The Bible said, don't forsake the gathering of, your, of ourselves together as the manner of some is. You need his word. You need his word. But Jesus is with us in the presence, in the person of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that carries his presence. He said, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. In the book of Acts, you see the, the, the apostles, they, they were going there and the Bible said, the Lord working with them because he was with them. They saw him go, but he, the Holy Spirit came on them. So he said, the Lord working with them, confirming his word with signs following. Everywhere we go, the signs will follow us. Why? Because he's here with us. He's very present. David was, was, was conscious of, the, of that fact. He said, the Lord is a very present help in times of trouble. He said, he, the Lord is a very present help. 
It sounds so generic, but it says, the Lord is a very present help in times of trouble. When Jesus was here, he was conscious of God the Father being with him. He said, my, his Father is always with him. Even when he prays, he always said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Always. You say, oh, that was Jesus. But with us today, is the same thing. He's here. One lady asked me one time, said, can you ask the Lord, can you see in the spirit who my husband is? I need to talk to them. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. We are not spiritists. We are not mediums. But the Lord is very present. He's here. Job wished to know. He said, I wish I knew where I might find him. I wish I did. So I can plead my case before him. Reason with him. Other people, you know, they fast and they pray for God to speak to them, to hear God's voice. But our understanding is that you pray and you hear. When Jesus prayed, he heard the Father. When I pray, I hear God. And the track record, you see, speaks for itself. Do you wish you knew where God is? Because he's right there with you. He says, you have come to Mount Zion, child of God. He said, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. To an innumerable company of angels. Innumerable. There are angels everywhere. We have come to them. They didn't come to us. We came there. To the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. He said to an innumerable company of angels. To God the judge of all. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. To the spirits of just men made perfect. To the church and general assembly. He said of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Look at it. We are there. He said, someone said, let's get in the spirit now. No, there's no such thing. He says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christ dwells in you. He said, you are in the spirit that way. You are born again. God is with you. It's a faith thing. Without faith, it is impossible. Faith is the substantiating of things hoped for. Without faith, it is impossible. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. That God is. I want you to know that God is with you right there. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. He's, he's with me here, he's with you there. That's the Spirit of God. And if you would learn his principles, Learn his principle. He gave you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for your maturity, for the perfecting of the sin. If you would learn his principles through these guys, the ministers he gave, you'll be amazed at the results. You'll be amazed. I've seen people over the years who never thought God could ever move through them or when they see a powerful man or woman of God on television, they go, wow, that's something else. And then now they get to see God doing the same thing through them. I've seen so many first-timers like that. You know, some, several of them, I've taken them by hand personally when we're in the healing line. And I say, okay, I'll minister to, to, to some of them. Now you minister to this. And you see them weeping as the, the power of God comes out of their own hands into the, the bodies of the other. That blesses the other person through them. And you see the, the person is in total disbelief. And one of them even said to me, maybe it worked because you were there. I said, no, I didn't do anything. And they go home and they experience testimony after testimony in their own vicinity where they live. On the streets, you shake someone's hand, they just get healed. Pains in their body go. Just by greeting, oh, how are you, my brother? And the pain go. And they're like, wow, you healed me. And he's like, what? He said, you healed me. God is present. God is there. When, when we close our eyes, some of us, we are not just speaking into the air. We are conscious of his word, of his presence. Some of you need to learn this thing of 
uh, T.L. Osborne would say uh, it's something Kenyon and Bosworth would do. They, they talk about practice the presence of Jesus. He says when he goes on the stages of the world to minister, in those crowds there, he says, I practice the presence of Jesus. Because out, without Jesus, I cannot do anything for these people. And in fact, some of them might do things to me because there are people who are into witchcraft over there and all this uh, sorcery stuff. But God is with you. God is with you. This, this is where your consciousness has to come to the party. You have to come to the party. One man said to me, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I said, you cannot waste my time. It's just not possible. My consciousness is bigger than that. I was looking at the other guy who said, oh, you're killing me. People don't, don't realize what's coming out of their mouth. They're conscious. You can never be above the level of your confession. Never, never. But I want you to know that God is with you. From today, you get to know that he's with you to the very end of the age. He said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comfort who will be with you forever. The Holy Spirit who will be with you forever. Not for two weeks, for three weeks, for a year, or until you do something. Or, you know, we used to be taught threatened when we were growing up. They used to tell us the Holy Spirit doesn't even say goodbye when he leaves. He just leaves you. Wow. What a teaching. How do you threaten us into working with God? This is a love. God is love. This is a love thing. There's no threatening here. I said, no, you know, the Holy Spirit never says goodbye. He just leaves. That's what we were taught. I was taught that. But it's utter nonsense. He said he will be with you forever. And that's the consciousness I have. That's the consciousness you should have, child of God. He will be with you forever. God is there. You are never alone. You can never be alone. You can feel lonely, but you are never alone. Not true. It's not biblical. It's inconsistent with God's word. So God bless you as you work on your conscience that he is with you 